Hi, Joe Cerrone. And Al Rosen. We're going to take a look at the PowerPoint. And so, introduction to 3D printing, printers, and printable materials. As we look at our lecture, We're looking at 3D printing, 3D printers and printable materials. And so these are our 3D45 printers and they're enclosed, fully enclosed, single extruder. This is what's called the build plate. You use glue sticks to apply glue to the build plate prior to printing. And then this is the filament that's going to be used for printing. So over the last 10 years, the technology has come down in price as patents have expired on the large 3D printers. And so there's a number of desktop 3D printers for consumers, and they call them FDM printers or fused deposit modeling. And so as we look at these types of printers, what they do is they use filament and then the filament is fed up into this extruder, which is heated and then builds the part on the build plate. The system uses a Cartesian coordinate system. And so all of these digital manufacturing type of equipment is tied into an X, Y, and Z axis. And that's what we tie into CAD and into our slicer. Different types of 3D printers. And so, Delta printers, this is an example of a Delta printer. They can build a large print volume. When we look at the parts that control a filament printer, we're looking at stepper motors and the stepper motors will control the movement in the different axes. And so it will move in the X, Y, and Z axes as it moves the extruder along the tool path that is created in the slicer. So as we look at our 3D printer, there's a touch screen on the printer, and then it's controlled by that touch screen. The filament goes right here into the machine, and it has Wi-Fi, and you can actually connect these printers over the internet and be able to control them. The build platform is the plate right here that the part has been printed on. Most of them are heated. And so by heating the build plate, you get better adhesion of the plastic. And that's the most important part of the build when we first start printing is the first layer. Because the first layer adhesion, if it's not properly applied, can cause faults as the part is built farther down the line. The extruder is this component right here that heats the material up. And so it has a nozzle, and then you have these different size nozzles, which will extrude the plastic from the tip of the nozzle. So the filament is pulled into the nozzle, the nozzle is heated, and then as the part is run through the tool path, it's extruded by these direct drive extruders. Essentially, there's a little wheel in here that pulls the filament into the extruder. And we set those feed rates within the slicing software. And so there's different types of extruders, whether they're direct drive, meaning how close the feeding mechanism is to the extruder head. As we look at our first projects, we're gonna start off by printing this do not disturb sign. And then we have coaster projects. This is an Oakton coaster. We have another version of it that we're going to look at for module two. And then as we work with 3D printing, this is one of the most common errors. When the build plate adhesion doesn't work, you'll come in and you'll have your 3D print two hours later. And if it's not supervised, you'll see that it will just uncoil and print in the air and what you'll get is what's called like a bird's nest, just material that is not adhered layer by layer to the previous layer. 
So when we work with 3D printing, depending on the orientation of the part, you may need to have build material or support material. Support material allows us to print so that if the part is not directly flat, that it will print those overhangs. And so we have an activity to look at a 20 millimeter calibration cube. And we like to print these calibration cubes because it gives us an ability to work with our micrometer. And so if we go out and look at our calibration cube, we can go out to Thingiverse and download a, a calibration cube and bring it in and take a quick look at that. And so I'm gonna hit escape. So we can go out to Thingiverse. And on Thingiverse, it's a repository for CAD models. And so it's put out by Ultimaker and it's got some really great models in here. Things like calibration cubes. And so we can come up here and search for a calibration cube. And so here's a calibration cube. What does that mean? Well, it, we orientate that in the 3D printer and then we print that and it's gonna be 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. And so we go and we select it. We can download it. I'm going to extract it. And it's a good idea to keep an eye on where you're putting your files. And so I'm putting all my files into my CAD 107 and I'm just putting in week by week folder. All right. And so I have the file extracted. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that in the slicer. And so I go to my Dremel Digi slicer and I'm going to say file new. And here we have our Digi slicer. I'm going to go and open that file. And you can see it's been placed on the build plate. I can select the material that I'm gonna use for it. And so I'm gonna use the Dremel PLA material. And then I'm gonna go take a look at this in custom and we're gonna take a look at some of the other aspects. We'll go through and prepare it. And here we have the part and we really don't need the support material. It has recommended it here but we can go and turn off the support material. And then re-prepare it. And so this will be our calibration cube. It will take 15 minutes, 14 minutes to create. And you can change the name on it. And so I could change it to my initials. And I think I'll just call it cube. We can check the slicing. And so we can see how the part is built layer by layer. And so this is what's known as additive manufacturing. As it gets closer and closer to the top, other features are revealed that are created. And then we'll save that to a USB drive and then we'll print it on a Dremel printer. And so if we look at that part,
we have our calibration cube and we can measure that with our calipers. And so we talked last week about getting a caliper and these are $9 on Amazon. And what you wanna do is you wanna set it up in millimeters. And so right now it says inches. And so I'll click that over to millimeters. And then we wanna close that. We can make sure that it doesn't have any material in it. And then it zeroes out. And then when we measure, what we'll do is we'll put our thumb on this part right here. And then we can see how close we're getting. And so we're getting 20.2 millimeters by 20.4 millimeters, 20.5. And that's within our tolerance as we go through and measure the accuracy of the layers. And it was created with a low resolution print. So that's within our tolerance. When we're looking at low quality, we're looking at within 0.3 millimeters. All right. Continuing. So we're setting up our our material and we need to dial in whether or not we need support material. We bring it into our slicer and then we printed a calibration cube. Some of the other things that we can print as we look at our digi slicer, here's some information on some other models and working with that, we'll come back to that. Here's an example of something that we can print that you could not print in any other manner. And so as we look at this, to be able to create a part like this by any other method would be extremely difficult. But with 3D printing, we're able to print this type of an object versus other manufacturing methods like computer numerical control machining or laser cutting. And so here's another example of how we could bring that in and slice that. And then as we look at different filaments and different filament choices, again, it's a good idea to go and have a caliper because filament comes in different diameters. And so if we're working on the Bosch Dremels, we're gonna be using a 1.75 millimeter filament. And if we're working on an Ultimaker, we're gonna be using a 2.85 millimeter filament. So the size and the diameters of the filament is important as we make our choices for that. TLA, polylactic acid, is a biodegradable corn-based plastic melts at a relatively low temperature. You can get it on Amazon for about $32 and you can get it like the next day. It's extremely quick and easy to get and it's relatively low cost. The difficulty with PLA is that it has a low temperature for melting point. And so you have to be careful about creating things that are gonna be put outdoors that are made out of PLA or they may warp. Post-processing we talked about and that's where we're taking off the support material. And so oftentimes you'll have to spend some time removing the support material from your prints. Some of the other projects that we make, some of the things that we've done, we've made these refrigerator magnets. And then from a standpoint of our work within this class, 
Every week we'll have chapter questions. And at the end of chapter two, we'd like you to go through and answer the questions in the review section, in the quiz section of the D2L system. Complete lab one and turn that in. And then we're going to take a look at lab two in our next video. Thank you very much. Remember your time for in-person is available if you would like to come in and work on your projects. All right, I'm gonna pause this video.